Testing, one, two, three. Welcome to Curling 101. Good. Welcome to the big spiel here at the Potomac Curling Club. Our feature match here in draw five is Hammer Hogs playing Curling is the New Black. I am your host commentator for this game, Michael Doms. With me today is Stacy Tedesco, running the keyboard, assisted by Haley. And sitting next to me with the other microphone is Mr. Mike Sell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dobbs. Uh, so just to start off with the play-by-play, -play, we've got a pretty nice looking draw here coming from uh, Got around. Curling is new black. It does get around that top guard. Uh, they're trying to sweep it out the back. It doesn't look like they got it out there. I think it's, think it's back eight. You got the overhead view there. Though. Solid back eight foot. Yeah. Looks like Hammerhawks are gonna opt to try and follow it down, get a little closer to the button. That's probably the right play. I have a view down the center line of that sheet, and uh, I can't really see any of the rock that came in there. There's not really a takeout available there. Oh, it's completely buried. Yeah, um, and you heard a little bit from the ambient mic there. She did know that she note that she was narrow on that release. Um, but it's going to be a pretty usable shot. It's got good draw weight. It's just going to go over the guard instead of under the guard. Um, 
but it's gonna be looks like it might it's gonna be in the top of the house there. You know that was decent weight. Yeah, it's I want it a little heavier. It's oh yeah, uh, but it is biting the top twelve there. So it's a, a sort of a decent corner guard. Uh, it's a counter. Um, it's Very definitely gonna be a usable stone in the Very end. Very usable. This is Dana throwing for curling as the new black. Throwing second rocks. Uh, my first instinct is that this looks like a pretty light stone. Uh, it's curling over pretty early. Uh, they're sweeping it really hard. I think they're just going to end up with a center guard here. If it, Yeah, it's in play. It does get over the, the center hard line. Work. Yeah. Nice one guard. Probably not what they were looking for, but... You know, it just it clogs up the middle. Yeah. As the end moves on, that is going to be something that they want. It does, according to the scoreboard, yellow does have the hammer. So red having a stone really high in the center doesn't really hurt their game at all. And especially since they've got one buried already, they can just muck it up and make it work. They do. The stone in the back eight is the shot stone right now. So just protecting that is a fine strategy to use, especially in the first end when you're still kind of feeling out the ice and the other team. Hammer Hogs here. They're looking for the same draw around. The line's much better. He definitely got out to the broom. Oh, line it's is breaking. Better. It's breaking early. The sweepers are on it. It's on the guard. It's past the high guard, but it's going to be on the low guard. We're going to see some contact. Uh, nothing changed as far as in the house yeah. goes, though. That so doesn't really change anything. Yeah, it's still the red in the back eight. It's still shot. There's still the yellow biting, just biting the top of the 12 foot. Second rock away for Dana here. Got a little further outside, so she's definitely around the guards. Sweepers are on it at the hog line. Dragging it down. Doesn't look like it's going to have enough steam to reach the top of the house, but it does put up another guard there. Blocks another draw lane that the Hammerhawks had. Um, looking down the sheet, I'm not really seeing a lot of ways to put a rock in the house at this point. Um, All they've got is this raise over here on the left side of our screen. Yeah, and I think the skiff is looking at it now. He's putting the broom on that stone. I think he wants to tap that in. Now, based on where the guards are, if they can tap that to the forefoot, they're in a really good spot. But it's an angled raise. When you go out that wide, you never quite know what weight do I need, how much is it going to curl. So it's, it's not an easy shot. No, it's not an easy shot at all. Um, but... Um, just looking down, not really having any draw ports, not having any major takeout opportunities. I think, it, I mean, it's probably what I would go for here, too. But Absolutely. It and is It is a challenging shot. This pretty is Miriam delivering for Team Hammerhogs. Pretty nice line on the delivery. It looks a little light for a draw, to, for the, the raise to me. Right. And, oh, okay, it does start to break. I was going to say I was worried about it not breaking enough to get out to that stone, but there it goes. It's, it's just a little too light. All right, very light. And unfortunately, that's going to make trying the raise again a lot harder. Yeah, she was, I mean, she wanted, you know, T-weight, or back house weight there. Uh, and that rock settled in as about a two or three guard. So, yeah, everything else worked out pretty well. I was I was not sure about the line and getting it to break off the center line there. But that was a pretty nice shot. This is Vice for curling as the new black. I missed his name tag, so I'm not quite sure what his name is. No, and I noticed that it's not uh, Bruce, who was vicing for this team last night either. So, And that would be Bruce Black, who the team is, I think, named for. So, That's all right. Curling is the new Black, expanding their guard coverage. There's a lot of mess out in front of the house. There's no path to the button. There's no path to the forefoot at all. I, we're, we're looking at a one-point end here. Yeah, I, red's, I think set, red's setting up pretty easily for their steal. They got in the shot, clogged up the front. Um, they could have a chance, maybe with their last stone, to try to promote in a second one if they are pretty aggressive. Uh, it's certainly not necessary, but it's, it's there. Absolutely. This is Christopher throwing his second rock as vice for Team Hammerhogs. 
It looks a little light. Looks fine, but I'm looking across the sheet at it, so I can't exactly tell where the broom was in relation to the rock. It does look like it's another one that's going to fall off light, though. Unfortunately, it's another light rock winding up his guard. Hammer Hogs would love to clear some stuff out, but it's just not happening. I think Richard is looking for a bit of a promotion here. Uh, he appeared to be calling for a draw weight shot here. Um, and I don't know that they can get around these guards, so I think he's sort of drawing through the guard. Uh, using the guard as the draw shot. Absolutely. You throw this rock as a draw to the button, and hopefully you'll get the nice raise. His delivery was a little wobbly, but that's okay. It it's is close. Uh, it's on the broom. It may be, uh, you know, a quarter of a stone wide, but, I mean, it was on the broom. Uh, it's coming down. It's going to make some contact with one of these guards. Yeah, unfortunately, they had to wait for so long to sweep it because it was a little wide. It, it wound up not having the correct weight to go and promote anything. And it changes the angles enough where I think it almost takes away promoting anything from the right-hand side of our screen. There is one exposed guard, but it's in a narrow port. Um, you're probably right. Yeah, there is a there is a shot there. So you'd probably have to throw it pretty heavy, and then you move you knock that through instead of into the house. Yeah, with the way it's curling, I mean, even on even on your heavyweight takeouts, you're getting two feet of curl. Yeah. With this a draw, you're getting four and a half. Looks like good solid weight here on a Yellowstone. They get an angle, um, they can poke it in. Will it curl enough? No. Oh! And I, th I think a little part of that was just overcompensating. After so many rocks came up light, they just wanted to, they certainly were not going to tolerate another light stone, so he came and gave it a good, good push. Absolutely. Um, and that happens a lot, too. When you miss a shot badly, you tend to overcompensate and miss your second one badly the other direction. Uh, it's unfortunate, but true. All right, we are down to Skip's Rocks here. Richard Chin coming up for his team. Looks like he's setting up to try the raise again, or maybe just plug it up. We'll see what kind of weight he throws. I mean, the ice looks like it's a call for a straight draw, but there's junk in the way, so I, I don't know. Yep. Yeah, oh, now here he's calling for more ice. I think he is looking for more something like a draw. Definitely. I mean, it, it is there. It's going to need some early sweeping. It's already on the guards. But you know what? He might get an angled promote here. He might be able to punch something through here. There's some contact on the two reds. Little tick, tick. Knocks the next one. And everything just settles. Ooh. Around. I do not like that result no, at all. And it, yeah, it opened up this port here that yellow can throw the hammer right through there Matt and take sees their one. Matt sees it immediately, has his vice put the broom down, and starts heading down the ice. He's oh, it actually I said the hammer, but no, this is actually the first Skips Rocks. This is uh, his first chance, so he'll, he'll have at least one shot. So actually, that that is even worse than I thought it was, because it doesn't just open up the chance to throw the hammer in there. But Yellow can actually throw both Skips Rocks and get the Skips Deuce. Well, more likely than not, Matt's going to try and make the draw here. If he makes it, Richard's just going to follow him down. There's nothing else to do. Right. Follow it down, freeze to one. Right. Or And if the draw leaves is left exposed, then the hit will be there, too. Um, and Richard can also just throw the guard. But first, Matt gets the throw stone. Line looks pretty good. Definitely getting out there. they got to wait for it to curl off the guards. Oh, oh it's, it's hanging. It's just falling out further. Yep. We're going to we're gonna get some contact on the grid. He's going to not like this. Uh, he hit it inside enough that he didn't raise it in. Oh, I, maybe oh, he did. It is biting, but I, from the screen, I think the Yellowstone is biting more than the Redstone. But they are both just fractions in the house. Uh, 
Uh, so if it does come down to either of those being a counter, uh, we're probably going to see a measurement. Um, or maybe they can tell better from out on the ice. Um, I think Richard is now going to throw the draw through that port. It's there. It's not that wide of a port. The rocks are offset just enough to make it a little tighter. Oh, they better sweep that. Well, no, nope, Richard smartly holds them off. There they go. He's through just the port. It's just off the yellow, through the port. Just past the red on oh, the left. So close. And sits top eight. Yep. Almost all of it in there. And that's going to be at least two reds for right now. That uh, is almost the perfect position for Richard to put that rock. Because yeah. if Matt tries to come down and freeze to it, he's not going to out count the back red stone. No. And I mean, for my, my chair here is almost basically right here behind the hack on this sheet. And... I can't see that stone. Like, he just threw that in there, and I know where it is. But looking down through all these guards, I, I don't know where it is anymore. Like, <laughs> I know where he put it, but I can't find it anymore. You know, as much as I think Matt won't like the shot, I think the rays on the left side of our screen is all he has. The, do the rays promote, where he hits his outside top left yellow guard, runs it back into the left tight guard, and tries to raise it into the forefoot for one. Yeah, I mean, I think there might still be an open draw through that same port, sort of like following the last rock down, but maybe a little bit wider. And if you can get to full eight, you can still be shot for one. Or if you can get partially in there, you can cut red down from two. But again, these are all really tricky shots. Uh, it's certainly not an open draw. I mean, there's a port, um, but it's not much of a margin for error at all. No. Now, he, he is going to try the draw. We, we watched him his vice put the broom down all the way on the edge of the 12 foot. So Matt's going for the draw, and good luck. Now they're going to, uh, this one looks like, again, it's hanging a little wide. Okay, they're going to hold it on the outside edge of this yellow guard, I think, to try to raise that. No. Nope. And it's going to collide with some other guards instead. So, no change. It looks like... I think it's too red, but we'll wait and see what they hang. They're moving the rocks already, so they can tell of those two biters which one was closer uh, better than we could right away. Most likely it's two for curling for hammer... Sorry, two for curling as the new black. Is There's the red the vice. He's got the one in his hand, and he hangs it on the two. Two, yes. At first, I thought he hung it on the one, and I was like, "That's not correct at all." But there it is. Two points on the board for the red team. Red lead, setting up in the half. And if curling is chess on ice, then what we're about to see here is. Pawn to E4. This is the center yeah. guard from the lead stone. Well, you're up early in the game. Put up center guard. Well, and if you're down and you're throwing the first rock, you put up put the center, up center guard. guard. Yeah. And if it's a close game, you put up the center guard. That's as I said. If this is chess on ice, then yep. that's that's pushing <laughs> your king pawn. <laughs> and they're going to sweep it a bit as it gets over the hog line. Drag a little deeper. But it is right on the center line. Oh, it overcurls a bit, but that's a really nice tight guard. That is fine. Just inches off the center line. Doesn't really matter. Yep. Covering a significant portion of the button and the forefoot zone. Yep. Given the ice call here, I, I think Matt's calling for a corner guard. He doesn't have enough ice to go for the draw. Um, it well. might be a corner guard, but I think at the weight, I think he might be, I think he's calling for the draw and just missed the ice call. Um, it's, it's definitely now on the draw line. Go 
Go that, go. Free, that freeze go to go. it is from our game on sheet C. Sweepers oh, on all it. the way. All the way. Barry, come on. Sweep, sweep. And that is a really nice draw yeah. right to the top four. Yep. That is um, perfect weight. Yep, yep. I think they were a little lucky that the yep, thrower yep. was a little yep. wide of the broom. Richard uh, coming right after that rock. Yeah, I, I was expecting that to actually overcurl and come out either side of the guard uh, instead of not burying the way it did. But that's, mm, if you're going to throw a rock in the house, that's where you want to put it. There's not a, not a lot of room behind it. Um, and if you get on top of it, you're not out counting it. Nice, aggressive opening start uh, for the Hammerhawks to try to get back in this game. This is Diana's rock. Richard was calling for the takeout, and Diana threw it, threw it pretty light. Yep, yep, yep. So he'll wind up with another corner, gu another guard, which is just fine. He did really well last time, just plugging things up. Winds up with very tight guard, not quite biting. We can hear Alan McNeil from the, our other game playing right now in this draw. But for the moment, we're back on sheet B with Danielle throwing her second rock for yeah. Hammer Hogs. She looked to be a bit inside. I think she's going to make some contact with the red guard here. They might be able to make it work. Oh, it looks a little heavy. It's going to punch that through, I think. But you know what? It's going to go in, but it's not going to sit shot. It's going to sit in the back. But it does kind of cover their previous draw. The good result here was that Danielle's rock rolled just a little bit towards the center line, and now sh yeah, the yellow shot rock is at least half covered, making it very difficult for Richard to do anything but come down to it. He can't put a lot of weight on it. He's got to play the freeze, and then later on in the end, he'll have the opportunity to do a race takeout. Richard, I agree. Yeah. Those look a little light. The Rock had great line, but unfortunately, they're going to wind up expanding the guard. They're actually fortunate they got a little bit of roll off of that, and that hopefully later in the end, they can do raise it into the house. Yeah, if they were just corner frozen, that Rock would be an ultimate guard for yeah. the yellow team. Yeah, there's no overlap between the red guard and the yellow guard there. So there is an open line to run the red back onto the yellow, uh, and there's an open line to run the yellow back onto the yellow yep. uh, if yellow wants to then try to get a second point out of this. So uh, an interesting setup there uh, will probably definitely come into play as the end progresses. Absolutely. This is Miriam, second for Team Hammerhogs, throwing her first of two rocks. Looks like they got top house weight on this. They might be going for a little tap up. It's definitely heading right now for the red, but it might curl off of it just enough. It's got the yellow guard, taps it up onto the rings, but not to out count the red that's buried in the back eight there. Um, <laughs> this is an interesting setup because I think Richard still has the straight nose hit on his red center line guard as a run back but it's very challenging to get the line exactly right. Richard smartly just going to ignore it for the moment, call for a draw around, try and narrow the scoring zone for Hammerhogs. Rock looks a little narrow. I think it's going to overcurl. Yep, there's the hook. They're not going to get it around the guard. They're going to angle raise it. They do wind up exposing Shot Rock without promoting Yellow to second shot. So currently Yellow is sitting first shot, Red is still second shot with a rock in the back of the house, and Yellow is third shot on the top right of your screen. Right there, like three inches in, off the eight foot. The eight foot just trying to touch the top floor. Matt trying to figure out what to do. His goal really is to get two points out of this end to match the two that Richard got. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because you really want to protect your shot zone there. Um, but anything that's going to sit on top of it as a guard, like in the top 12 there, won't count for your second point. Uh, uh -huh. But you have to be careful because if you draw something down to tap it back to maybe try to sit top and bottom of the forefoot, uh, then you really open up with that double. Because it's not a really big draw for it, but it's very much big enough to throw a hard shot through there. You know, and that's one of the, as much as I love having a rock on the button, it's sometimes challenging because you're, you want to try and protect it, and yet it might not be the right strategic move to no, set up for two. This was actually a pretty nice call to try to draw around the outside and then bury under that red guard. Yep. Uh, but they didn't clear the guard. Uh, but it had the weight that if that came down to be about top eight under that red stone, uh, they would have been a, a sitting a pretty nice two Absolutely. Uh, without the double being there. Yep. Uh, the wick off of the guard did push the guard over the yellow. So now the takeout would have to be a raised takeout. There's no line on a direct hit anymore. Uh, and they are still shots. So they didn't hurt themselves particularly badly. Absolutely. And um, it, it's no longer a straight takeout. As you were saying, it's now a raised takeout, which is a little more difficult. Richard, going to play the other side of the ice, sees that the red and yellow stones are lined up perfectly to attack shot rock. So if Richard can hit this with enough weight just on the outside, he might push yellow off of the forefoot. Delivery was a little shaky. And it's really light, unfortunately. And he kind of pulled it across his body on the release. Uh, so it's going to end up narrow as it comes down the ice. He's going to look for it to do a raise here. Unfortunately, it's just going to plug up the top. Yeah, the, l the line it ended up with at the end, I think if they had known that that was going to be the line, I think they could have dragged it down for a little bit of a promote, but... At least there was a little bit of an awkward shot. It was tough, I think, for Richard to predict what that rock was going to do. Yeah, it was the weight was just not what he expected at all. All right, this is Christopher Richard here for Team Hammerhogs. His first of two rocks. And now this is, uh, you know, I've been in this spot a few times as a skip, and it's, you're, you're happy. You're like, look, I'm shot. There's all these rocks in front. I can't, uh, um, you know, I... I'm in a good spot here. There's not much that can happen to me wrong. But you're only sitting one. You really want to sit two. And there's there's just this wall. <laughs> you're happy to be behind it, but you're not happy that you only have one stone behind it. Absolutely. Now he, he is in an OK position because he has, on the right side of his screen, the red on the yellow rays. But he's opting to again go on the right-hand side, try just almost a straight draw. And if he's wide, which he is right now, he might try an angle raise, but unfortunately, it's too heavy. He's, He's going to wind up raise, swapping rocks. And that's going to push out the back. Yes, you are exactly right. Uh, it still does leave them a little bit of a corner guard. Uh, it's a little bit higher, and so the angle is a little bit better, I think, maybe to try to tap it in. But it is then a longer raise, so there's more, more risk there. Leaves the same uh, challenge here for Richard to know that for sort of from the opposite angle, okay, we have this big wall. How do we get through it? Uh, he sees the line here, red onto the yellow, onto the yellow. Uh, there's not really much that can go wrong here. The, those two yellows are both already in the house. You can't really mess that up. The weight is much better here, but it looks like he was a little wide of the room. He needs it to curl back in, which it will. There's going to be contact. It is going to make some good contact onto the red stone, but onto not the yellow enough stone. Not weight. And the yellow is going to come across the top. And Ouch. I was wrong when I said there really wasn't a way that he could hurt himself there. That actually did promote the yellow into second shot and buried it under this pile of guards on the center line. Matt has uh, got to be thinking guard, guard, guard. Yeah, I, I, it looks like he's got the same idea I have in that you maybe want to corner guard over that open red on the left. Yep. Uh, my left, I guess it's the right of the viewers on the screen. Absolutely. Uh, right side. Get a little corner freeze almost, plug um, up the hole. Yeah. This one's but hanging. This rock is just running straight as an arrow here. It's going to come down. Oh, and it's going to tap this red. And I don't know. Oh, it's going to tap the high red. Okay. Uh, but this is great. It spreads out the yellow guard. This is a fine result. Moves all the reds to the other side <laughs> of the center line. So the red raises don't go onto the yellows. There is the one sort of open right there where he's pointing. There yep. is there is a raise. I think there's a double there. A raise Absolutely. Double. 
It's there, and Richard can make it. I mean, if it was my shot, I would be very excited about attempting it. Um. <laughs> hey, you throw it, I call the line, we'll make, we'll make the shot. That's, that's, your, that's your job. <laughs> I, I, you, you give me a stick, and I'll push the rock towards it. Richard is indeed going to try some kind of raise takeout, probably the raise double, but at this point it's all about the line. If he hits it nose on, he might get the double. If he's a little off on the line, the yellow rocks will kind of jam on each other and only one will go out of the house. Uh, that's true, uh, but even then, removing one yellow, with the way the front of the house is clogged up, uh, you're holding the hammer team to one which is still a pretty good result, especially when you've stolen it It's over curling. Yeah, as but you mentioned, still there's got a bit one. of a jam. One yellow out, one red spilled. Uh, so yellow is shot, but only one, only sitting one point. Uh, and Richard still has one rock left in this game. Matt, I if I were Matt, I'd be a little worried when I'm playing against Shin that Richard can take that rock out. Suddenly, He's sitting three. So it's hammer hogs. I really want to get another rock in this house and he, counting. Yeah, you want to get another one in there counting, both to make sure that if one gets lost, you can still get two with the hammer, or uh, because if something goes, uh, if Richard misses a shot and you're sitting two with the hammer, then you can throw three. So Hammerhawk setting up here for a draw shot, uh, <laughs> perhaps maybe a raise of one of those guards. Uh, it all depends, I guess, on the line, how this rock comes down there. Uh, but either way, it's going to be about draw weight. Looks okay on the weight. I thought it was light, and now I think it might be heavy. So I think that means it was pretty close either way. Uh, it's going to go right through the port, tap the shot stone. Richard's trying to sweep it back out of the house. It just gets to the back of the 12, but it doesn't look like, actually, I can't tell if it went far enough to be out counted by the redstone. Um, I think the red does have more of the eight foot circle under it. And so it is still one yellow, red second shot, yellow third. Uh, so yellow has some opportunities here to maybe make this into a big end with the hammer. But at the moment, it's red's turn. Uh, red's play is to, I think he's torn between just raising a redstone in to be shot and taking out a yellow one by going for the court there. Looks like they've settled on uh, going with a raise uh, instead of trying to actually move the yellow stones. They're going to move the red ones. Uh, I think maybe to avoid uh, the scenario that happened on the last shot uh, where they uh, promoted an extra point in for the opponent. Uh, so, you know, you, you throw a raise with your own stones. Uh, the worst case scenario is that you just put your own rock in the house, which is what he's trying to do anyway. Back from my cookie break. Richard's obviously trying a raise here. It's it's close. There's the contact. Not. It's going to touch the red in the back. So red is now going to be shot. Let's take a look at our overhead cam. And uh, that's yellow has to be second. That is close. On the camera, I want to say it's red, but the camera is a little bit skewed. Um, so it's another one of those, like the biter's last end, 
I'm pretty sure the people in the house can tell very easily which one is closer. We, we have no but idea. But me from here, through the glass, through the rocks, at a sort of flat angle, not being able to look over the top of them, I would only be able to guess. It's either red one or yellow one. Uh, we do have the Hammerhogs with their final stone. Uh, they can make it kind of a moot point, maybe, by moving some yellows closer. Um, I imagine that that's the plan. He looks to be setting up the same line he threw on his last stone, uh, where he drew down through the port. And that would be fine. Uh, that would be great. He could, you know, tap that stone uh, onto the button. Make sure he gets his one. Uh, and he could maybe, if, you know, if this goes perfectly, he could split it, split off of it and get two. Nah, split's not there. Oh, it's narrow. It's over curling. He's probably going to crash into the red. Very close, and it is going to contact the red. It's really swingy ice. That's so yeah, it's not going to change the end result, uh, but what that end result is will take some deliberation. And, of course, the vice has immediately come to a conclusion. They know what it is. We'll find out. And it looks and like red, red is scored. setting up in the hack, so they are saying that the red team scored. So that is going to be one more uh, for curling is the new black, throwing the red stones. All right, beginning of the third end, Chin has stolen one point here for curling is the new black. So red is now up. Three to nothing. And the Hammerhawks living up to their team name uh, because they have, in fact, had the hammer the entire game so far. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. They like the hammer, which generally you don't. Well, Not for too long. I mean, to their credit, they have held a really strong team uh, to some small steals. And three points with the hammer is never out of the question. Absolutely. Even in that last end where they were not really in control of the end, they still had a decent chance with the hammer to have gotten two or three points out of it. Absolutely. Um, so I think, um, you know, if they especially they're getting a lot of rocks to play, and that's that leads to big ends. So with the opening stones of the end, uh, the red team has drawn into the house. Uh, they're sitting just behind the T-line in the four-foot circle. Uh, and so the opening stone for yellow uh, is going to follow it down. It starts to curl across onto the red stone. There's some contact. And they're going to sit just biting the edge of the button. You can hear Alan McNeil again over on sheet C. Um, trying to take a look at which team is which color over there. And I can give you a score report from there. Uh, the next red stone is on the way. Uh, it's right up the middle. Looks to have some good draw weight on it. Curling off of the yellow stone. top of the house, over the T-line, into the back of the house. Skip is sweeping it, and it is over the back line. So that is going to be an unfortunate miss uh, for curling his new black. Uh, you, hear, you hear the quick conversation there between Shooter and Skip. Uh, shooter asking if the skip wants a guard, and the skip saying no, top eight. So setting up for the draw here. There it goes. 
does. Looks line is pretty nice. Looks like it could be light, but it's hard to say. I've been wrong a lot on that. Uh, if it's going to be light, it's still going to be a fine guard, but I'm pretty sure that is a draw into the house. There it goes, right to top eight, just what the skip asked for. So the line wasn't perfect, but it still sets yeah. up pretty nicely. Two rocks in the house. Uh, first yeah, shot and way, third shot. Uh, but it is close, and if you keep putting rocks in the house, uh, you'll be able to get some good things to happen for you in the end. We're going to introduce our other guest commentator for this end, so please welcome Haley. Thanks, everybody. This uh, is so exciting. Mic closer to your mouth, Haley. Can you skip it out or seal it up? There we go. That's much better. So what do you think so far, Haley? All right, so that was Dana, who is our one of our newer members to Potomac. She's awesome, and shout out for Team Curling his new black and their awesome socks today. Great sock choices all around, and also Hammer Hogs with their matching t-shirts. Gotta have matching t-shirts. All about the team uniform. That is Spirit of Curling right there. As we're looking back, did they just throw up a center guard cell? Uh, yes, they did. So that was a uh, pretty nice tight center guard uh, for the uh, for team curling as the new black. Uh, it didn't cover anything that's already in the house, but that's probably what they were looking for because the two stones shot and third shot are yellow stones. Uh, so it gives them a chance actually now to hit and roll under cover uh, with a later rock. Uh, but here comes <laughs> one more draw shot, I believe, coming down for it the hammer hogs. It's super narrow. It's probably going to curl onto that red guard, yes. Uh, yep. It would not be unheard of for it not to, but there it goes, breaking over the center line. So they're going to leave it alone so that they don't drag it too far. And I didn't even hear any contact. I think it just curled over so softly that even if it, if it tapped that guard at all, <laughs> it didn't tap it enough for our mics to pick it up. Uh -huh. Richard looking to clear some of that yellow out of the house. And now he's going to use that guard he just played uh, by playing a hit off of one of these yellow stones and rolling under his newly formed center guard. Absolutely. There's a just a great example of setting up your shots because when that guard went up, uh, it didn't really affect the end as much. There wasn't, it didn't cover anything that was already in play. Uh, but he knew what he wanted to do. He sort of knew what the other team was going to do. Uh, but this takeout is a bit wide. Yep. It could pick up some turn here. Maybe enough to contact that yellow. Yes, does it on the outside. Knocks it That's back. That's a and bad result. At oh. the moment, is now going to leave Yellow sitting one and two. If Yellow can put up a nice guard here, just right at the center line, they will have massive control over this end. Two in the forefoot, behind cover, w is very nice. Yeah, it's oh. early in the end. You're going to have to defend that for a while, but you might as well. Matt sounded like he was actually calling for another draw here, though. He, um, he may be looking to put a little more pressure on. It is early in the end. It is early, and depending on where he draws to, oh, I, here you see uh, Richard giving him a little bit of friendly advice here, telling him he probably should call the guard. Yep. Um, that is not a guard. No, if it's heavy, I think they might want to sweep this to make this a takeout on the red. Yep. And that's what they're doing now. They're on the br on the brooms. they got to hold it. It's, it's going to overcurl. Oh, uh, I think they might still get got, a tick. They've still got a touch. Uh, no, oh. it's going to just go through the house. So Through the port that almost wasn't there. So, you know, good ah. side, they didn't accidentally move their rocks around. Uh, that side, that is wide open. And this is going to be a strong hitting team. Absolutely. Richard, thinking about a couple rocks ahead, doesn't mind having his own rock sitting four with backing. An interesting fact, guys, this team, the curling is the new black, all of the members here yes! come from families of curlers. Richard's family curls, Dana's, or Dana's family curls, Diana's family curls. All right. Curling is that nice family-friendly sport. Uh, you need four people on a team. Yep. A household tends to be a good place to find four people. Absolutely. 
know, I, I really enjoyed the week when we had a when we had a uh, three generations on the same team in our Sunday league. There was the grandpa, the father, and the daughter. Fairly young daughter who just <laughs> would not stop moving on the ice. And if we're talking about curling grandpas, shout out to Dana, her grandpa Kaiser. Fair enough. We have a, a bond spiel named after him. <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard wound up with a very nice rock for his team. He's not shot, but he doesn't care about that right now. No, his he has cut yellow down to one at most at the moment. Uh, and he's sitting second and third uh, with a lot of difficulty to take out the yellow stone to finally just put the uh, exclamation point on the end. Well, this rock's going to overcurl, plow into the guards, and we'll see where it winds up. It could end up actually being a good result if it just messes up the guards enough to open up some ports. Uh, no, not exactly what happened there. Uh, it did sort of spit that red over to the side, which is another playable stone now. Unfortunately, Richard's looking at the perfect shot where he just taps up his own rock to the button. And if Richard can make this little tap to the button, there's no way anybody's getting him off. His rock will stay on the button till the end of the match. Well, end of the end, anyways. Uh, right, they do put the rocks away between ends. It won't <laughs> sit there the whole match. Uh, good catch. Oh, oh this arrow. He, I was about to say that he's very wide, and I think he corrected for how wide he was by pulling it narrow. Yep. Uh, That's going to crash on the guards. I think. The sweepers are holding it. That is going to get well. around the yellow guard. No, no, it's not. They let it go, and it curled. Um, he did come out pretty wide and then overcorrected on his release. Uh, so it didn't change the situation in the house. We still have red, sh uh, yellow shot, red second and third. Uh, another yellow guard spills over to the left side on the corner. Uh, and for this delivery, I think they're not taking a lot of ice, so I think they're going to try to throw a takeout on the red stone here. Try and peel it out. He's got enough weight. It's hanging super wide. It finally starts to curl. It's going to get inside the corner guard, but it's going to hit the stone in the back. Rolls over and they hit one too. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, not that a was. shot that I even would have thought to go for. Is it a fine result? Absolutely. The only problem is you've left Richard with even more backing, so he can just tap his own red rock up and sit on the button with two yellow rocks as backing and. That's it's true, and that's the danger of when you're sitting shot behind the P line. Absolutely. Uh, you know, in a vacuum, that went from sitting one point to sitting two points for yellow. Great result. If that was the hammer, that was a fantastic shot. Yep. Uh, but as you mentioned, you know, there's nothing now stopping the redstone from just sliding back a foot, nestling in the pocket there, and then there will be no way to remove it from the house. Richard's got decent weight. It needs to curl a little, but it should. Come on, Rock, break. It's off the corner guard. He might take it wide. Sliding in. He's going to tick his own Rock. He's going to tick off of it and spill over, but he cut him down to one. It looks like yellow is still shot. Yeah, the yellow but one. only on one yellow yeah, is shot. The back right one, at least from my view, that it's on the right is closer to the bottom. And then I think it's the red one and then the yellow one. But now we've got... And then the red one. And then we've got four stones touching the four-foot circle. <laughs> so we've suddenly turned this from the first end where we had 15 rocks in play, two of them in the house, to what do we have, like seven rocks in play, four of them in the four-foot circle. So... <laughs> Ooh, I don't think it's better. Read the ice. Everyone has found draw weight. So what do you do if you're hammer hogs in this situation? You're down... That's Three. A, so the advanced level shot here is a thin corner freeze on the right side of the red rock to kind of prevent Richard from bumping it up and also set you up so that you can do a, I call it a corner takeout almost, wind up punching the red through the outside and you'll get two. No. Oh, so, you, so you freeze onto it, uh, one to block the raise. 
and then two, to give yourself a bigger target to shoot at to make the takeout. Absolutely. I can see that. Uh, that is definitely a, a tricky shot, and that is a, a good example of having to sort of use a rock to set up a future rock. This rock is a little heavy and wide. I, he's not going to like this. Might wind up ticking off the guard and rolling in. He's, he's definitely ticking off of that corner guard. Here comes the roll across. Not really going to change anything. No, it is another rock in the house, but at fifth shot, uh, I don't see nope. it really affecting the way this end is going to shake out. Unfortunately, not going to matter. Richard still has that same delicate tap, and the rock is covered about half by the guard, but easily makeable. In fact, he doesn't even have to tap it up more than three inches just to out count so just the two yellow rocks. To just touch the logo there. Yep. Richard taking his time, making sure he evaluates all the angles and options. I mean, he, he really can't do any damage if he throws draw weight. That's true. Um, yeah, the only real way that he could somehow give yellow more points uh, would be coming down the left side of the sheet and hitting one of those yellow guards in. So he's just not going to, he's just going to avoid that side of the sheet entirely. Yeah, no um, reason to go there. Yeah. Um, and like you said, if he throws a draw, uh, there are plenty of ways that this little tap back doesn't work, but none of them make it worse. Absolutely. Uh, he can't, if he throws a draw at it, he's not going to chip it all the way out of the forefoot and turn this into, you know, two yellow. Well, um, Richard won't do that. You or I throwing this could absolutely do that. Oh, it's, it's possible. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot to see of that rock. Um, so there's always a chance of either overcompensating and being a little wide or overcurling and crashing on the guard maybe on the way down. Richard got super low on that delivery and his rock's hanging really wide. This is gonna this is gonna make contact with but that you rock that's all the way out on the edge. He, if that rock curled just a little bit, just enough. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna push the yellow just back. Just enough. So instead of moving the red to out count the yellow, he's gonna push the yellow out of the way. Fascinating. Now it is I think it's one red. I think the two yellows are both fully still in the forefoot, and the last red is not. So I think it's one red. But again, you know, we'll let all the people that are actually out there on the ice figure this out. We have people for that. Um, I think at this point, yellow's just gonna got to draw for one. You've got a little bit of backing, so you can do a little bit of a light hit and roll in off the red rock everybody's looking at right yeah, now. Yeah, the one that's on the D-line there? The new yeah. one. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of a, uh, you know, a tick and roll onto the button from there. Um, and there's not a lot of danger. But we had a we had a race to the forefoot at this end, and everybody got there. Yep. So makes our cameras happy. Lots going on. It does make the cameras happy, and it does make uh, it makes for some exciting shots. We're gonna get to see some uh, some really uh, interesting use of angles and ticks and raises. Um, it does make that the uh, you know the other eight feet of the house <laughs> sort of irrelevant at this point. Uh huh. Matt Henning delivering a skip for his team. Oh, needs that rock to curl it's a, a little lot. bit wide, and I think he's a little bit heavy, so he's not going to be able to get the extra curl on this. Yep, um, that's not going to change anything. Should wind up with one red, as if we are assuming correctly. Assuming objects on the camera are as close as they appear, which is not a guarantee with our cameras. Slices doing a little checking with the brooms and such now. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a measure maybe, if they're not sure. Might as well do it for fun. Could be a good educational moment for the teams. Nope, they're putting the rocks away. So again, we will wait to see the number that they hang on the board. And who puts a rock in front of the hack? 
Well, we know, I, well, I'm, we're pretty sure that Red was definitely at least shot for one. Red is setting up in the hack to throw the lead stone, and Red has hung one point on the board. Uh, so through three, we've got a score of uh, Curling is the new black uh, with four points, uh, currently leading the scoreless uh, Hammer Hogs. Uh, but again, I mean, it's still early in the game. It's only been three ends, and we've seen a lot of rocks in play. Uh, a three or a four ender here from the Hammer Hogs, not out of the question. Absolutely. They were only a couple of mistakes either that they made that they shouldn't have or that if Richard had made, you know, from a big end there. Now, unfortunately for Curling as a New Black, this guard is going to drift through the house. Here comes the Hammerhawks' first rock down the sheet. Uh, it's going to cross the hog line here. They're sweeping it down. They want to make this a nice, tight guard. Uh, they've pulled it off the center line a bit. It's going to be a little bit high, but that's still a pretty nice guard. Um, I'm pretty sure they wanted that a little bit lower and a little bit further off the center line. But a guard's a guard. That's going to be a nice place to put some rocks behind to try to get some points this end. Absolutely. And we are going to, going to introduce our second guest commentator, swapping up with our keyboard operator. Please welcome Stacy. Thank you. We've got the team. Thank you. We've got the team names up there now. Sorry about that. Haley and I are still working, learning how to work all this computer technology. Absolutely. We are an all volunteer organization, so we are always happy to educate and have people learn more skills, including how to webcast curling. And curling is the new black. Uh, looks like maybe another overcompensation there from the first guard going through the house. Uh, this one ends up short of the hog line, and so that one's going to be out of play. So this could be the opening that the hammer hogs have been looking for. They're going to be able to get two rocks in play uh, without any contesting from the other team. Setting up well. All right, this once again is Danielle throwing lead rocks for hammer hogs. Looking to put one in the house. Wouldn't mind a guard, but definitely looking for in play. Looks heavy to my eye. I would have thought it is a bit wide of the center line, so it could slow down a bit. It doesn't look like it, though, as we cross the hog line. And now we're already to the top of the house. Yes. And then to the T line. Sweepers Everyone wants it to slow down. Richard is not even trying to sweep it out. He just lets it drift over the back line. Ju and just over. Just uh, too heavy. Oh, and then over here on C, uh, we've got a nice draw coming into the top of the house. Uh, but we have a sweeper trips over a guard. Uh, he didn't burn the shooter. Um, Fortunately, it was the hammer. And it was the hammer, so they're not going <laughs> to worry about where the guards go. <laughs> and I think that was too yellow. We'll wait till they hang that. But that'll be the end of the fourth uh, between Hamilton and... Uh, the, the team's being skipped by Allen. Are they actually called Team McNeil? Uh, probably. Okay. I believe so, yes. All right, this is Dana here for Curling as the New Black. Yet again, I think it's a little heavy, but this rock should stick around in the house. Uh, there it goes. It crosses over the button. The other skip jumps on it to try to drag it back as far as he can. He drags it to just about the back of the 12-foot circle. Uh, my screen is on the wrong end of the sheet, so I can't see it. <laughs> And now my screen is pointing on the right side, and so I can see that that red zone is 
just about possibly touching the 12 foot circle there on the inside edge. And we have discovered that I am actually tall enough to flip the screen. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> so that is an all of us learning lots of things today, webcasting curling. Absolutely. Now, unfortunately, that rock is just a biter, and unfortunately, it's going to make it's it harder. It's going to kind of guard that stone in the back of the house. Uh, there's enough separation that you can draw around. But not with a lot of weight. No. Uh, we'll see what uh, Richard here calls for the red team. I'm betting he's going to call for a guard. I uh, would here, I would too, call. because I'm pretty sure that if I'm in the on the yellow team, I want to throw a freeze. So I think I want to just throw a corner guard over here where Richard is holding the broom. Um, so just to clog up that extra drawing lane. And I think that's what they got. Oh, this rock is diving back to the center line very hard. It and died just above the hog. But you got a guard out of it. There is a guard there. Um, I still think that because of the way these rocks are curling, uh, they can still throw outside that line and get under the guards, if not onto that stone in the back of the house. You can definitely still throw the freeze, but you can't put any kind of takeout weight on it. It's not even back line. Uh, and for anyone who is interested of our however many viewers, oh, it's down to six now. I thought it was seven. Uh, th that was the three yellow that was hung over on sheet C last end. And so at halftime, at the end of the fourth end, uh, that's going to be five points for Team Hamilton uh, to two for Team McNeil. This is looking really nice. There they go. They're off it to let it break a little bit more. Come on. It breaks. Oh, I think they want to get a little finish on it. No, no, no maybe need, not. They're no letting need. it go. Look at that. Right onto the pin. Fantastic shot. Staying above the tee line just a little bit. All Richard can do is come down and freeze to it. That is a textbook draw to the button. It is just all above the tee, all the way on the button. Completely just buried. Shout out to Miss Diana, who you can see on the left side of your screen representing our junior curlers. One of the fun things about the big spiel is that a lot of our juniors get to play in it as well. All right, the Richards team is going for the freeze here. Rock looks a damn close. Okay, Wound they're up a little heavy. They're off it to let it curl. It's going to come down and make some good contact with this yellow stone. Going to pick it off the button. Nice and shot. And all the way out to the back to sit red to. I was not Mostly sure. Mostly under the cover. That one's a bit exposed. Uh, they're going to try to take it out. I honestly didn't think that shot was there, but they proved me wrong. But now Matt and the Hammer Hogs can do a little hit and roll, or if they're feeling lucky, go for the longer double. But at the moment, I think they're happy to just hit and roll, put more in the forefoot. He's not giving a lot of ice, so he's going to have to have plenty of weight yeah. on this rock. I like a hit and roll. I think I might even like it just a bit of a pushback here to try to sit in the top four and just move that one into the back. Um, yep. You have to be careful when you start stacking opposing rocks in the back of the house like that, but as of right now, it could be a good Ooh. way for them to get some backing for the draw. It's around the guard. Nice. But there's a nice hit, a nice little flip over under cover. And that's going to be the shot stone again. That was a great sweep call from the skip. Having his sweeper stay off it to let it curl all the way. Just barely getting around the guard. And got a little bit of a roll back toward the center line. We put our top crack researchers on it, and that was Daniel Black throwing vice for curling as the new black. Our crack researchers being the rest of the warm room. Always a fun time sitting here watching curling. Winds up with a guard I'm not sure he's happy with. Super high actually really hurts any chance of a an upweight draw. Yeah, it's it's high. 
a high guard like that really benefits just whoever is in control of the house because it really just shuts off that whole side of the sheet. At the moment, uh, with the Yellowstone just on the top of the button, Yellow is actually in good control of the house. Uh, so yeah, Red definitely wanted that guard a little bit lower. Uh, but that's an unfortunate miss from the Hammerhogs. Um, a lot of different things are going on there. Could have been uh, you know, another draw over to that side. Uh, maybe a freeze in the back there. Uh, but it ends up just a little heavy and just swaps out one stone for the other. Uh, so not a lot of change up the center line here where uh, yellow is shot and red is just a few feet behind them uh, with a pile of guards in front. Richard calling for the draw. Going to try and out count yellow here. Yellow is still only sitting one, but Richard doesn't want to give him any more than that. How about, how about you trust us? It's always interesting when our microphones pick up little comments from the other sheets. We can hear the takeouts, hear the excitement, hear the good team communication. Or whatever else happens to be going on out there. Exactly. All right, here comes Richard. Everyone skips rocks. He's out to the broom. Looks a little light. But the ice might be speeding up. I am. Well, I thought for a moment I might be wrong. It is going to be lighter than they wanted, but it didn't look as light as maybe we thought it was when he released it. It's just going to tick that guard. I think it actually had probably top four weight. Uh, they could have dragged that down. A little more sweeping. I think you get around the guard, actually would have been a contender. It could have been a contender. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who went there. All right. Now, Richard's going to have an angled raise possibility. So, so Matt's going to have to watch out. What is he looking for? Is he looking for a draw to try and sit two? Is he looking for a guard to try and eliminate the possibilities for curling as the new black and secure his one, which, you know, at this point, uh, get on the scoreboard. I, I can see both ways. Uh, you haven't scored. You want to just maybe flip the ends around, you know, get a couple points. Give up the hammer. And make uh, Richard play with the hammer for an end. Yep. You know, normally the hammer is the advantage, but sometimes just get in that mindset where you just, it's not working out for you. Just maybe try playing defense for a bit. Absolutely. Um, I, I do think they really want to try to get at least a two here just to close the gap a little bit before they do that. Uh, and they are setting up to be able to do that. It just comes down to uh, where they want to try to be really aggressive here. Maybe just move all the red stones and try to set up for something like a four. Uh, or do they want to just you know keep burying that one and then maybe throw the hammer in for two? Well, he's definitely throwing a draw weight. Or actually, it looks like a guard weight because they're sweeping it all the way. It is super light. They're having to work to get it over the hog line. It's over. It's going to get a little tick off this set guard. And they're going to roll it back out. And they're going to cover that red stone quite nicely. So that is going to take away a, a pretty easy raise uh, that the red team was looking at. Absolutely. Richard looking at drawing around way outside now. It's a it's a tall and order. And this is where that red guard that they that guard that left high is sort of messing up their plan because I think what they would love to do is to just pick that yellow one out. And you so you just come around with a sort of a heavy draw. As they did before. And but that that high guard just over the hog line is sort of right on that line that they would want to use. So if they try to throw inside, they have to throw a pretty heavy shot. And if they want to throw away outside like they're doing now, I don't know that they're going to be able to have the weight to actually push that off the forefoot. I think this may just be narrow the scoring zone, make it harder for yellow to throw any kind of draw that's in a scoring position. It could be. Uh, it even could be something like a top house draw just to block any yellow attempt to put another one in the house. And this is curling hard. It's going to crash on that guard winds up opening the entire side of the sheet and is going to give yellow a nice draw path. And now here are the Hammerhogs uh, with their 
big chance here to put up a two with the hammer. Absolutely. He's got to be full eight foot and a little more to out count that back red. Matt using his pre-shot routine to line up very carefully in the hack, making sure his shoulders are straight, putting the rock on the line of delivery. Comes out, nice, clean delivery. Looks a little heavy. Sleepers are staying off. He needs it to die. And he needs it to curl. And it is. It if is. If it comes over, this will work because he can use his own stone as backhand. Oh, oh, it's going to be just a little heavy, I think. Will he take off the back if red? He ticks the oh, red, look at it die. It. Oh, oh, it just swings awesome. over. Nice. The other skip in time can't drag it out, and that is two rocks in the forefoot. Two points for yellow. Hammer Hogs are on the board with a solid two. The score is now four to two. Hammer Hogs will no longer have the hammer, which I'm sure they're pretty happy about. I'm sure they are, and I'm sure they're happy about that two points. That is a very nice uh, clutch shot from the skip there mm -hmm. to, to put two points on the board, flip, uh, the, flip the ice around here. Definitely. A little challenging because they had to play it on that side of the ice that much. You never quite know what it's going to do. And skip through the right one, and the sweepers knew it needed to not be swept. And all around a good team shot. Oh, and a good team end, because that's what you set up your ends for. You want your skip to be ha have an open shot with the hammer to put it where it needs to go. And that's what they did. They set up to get a two, left the shot for the skip, and the skip made it. Two points. Hoorah. So now uh, the lead of the Hammer Hogs is throwing the first rock of the end. Yep, that is Danielle. Looking for the guard. The sweepers are on it, but it's not going to have any trouble getting in play. It just comes down to can the sweepers put it where they want it. Yep. It's, it's getting onto the center line. They let it, they're let they off of it to let it curl a bit. It curls onto the center line. That is a great and center guard. I don't see it on the screen, so that means it didn't get to the house. So that is a very nice tight guard on the center line. Great opening stone in the end. Absolutely. This is how you set up to steal. Diana trying to counter. Richard calling for the draw behind that guard, trying to beat him to the forefoot. Uh, I think this is going to end up short. Oh, it's going to end up even short of the hog line even. I thought at least they had a guard in play. Well, at this point, Richard does not want that rock as guard. So That's he's going to let it die right. and tell his sweepers not to get it over the hog yeah, line. Yeah, that makes sense. And even if it was, it was only going to be on top of the previous center guard, the line it was on. And you um, don't want that. Yeah, so I, I agree with the skip's call. Just leave the rock alone. Um, you know, If it's not going to be in play, just leave it out. Absolutely. So again, the hammer hogs have a chance to open the end with putting a couple, a couple of rocks in play uh, without anyone contesting them. We'll see if Danielle can do another magic shot. Line looks pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit wide, but I think for a draw, it's not a big deal. Well, on line, our ice is pretty forgiving right now because you can just let it curl, come on back. That's true. And, the, um, you know, if you're just trying to tuck it behind the guard, uh, it's more about the weight. Uh, and if they're just trying to put it in the house, it's also just more about the weight. This is going to end up being another very nice tight guard, though. Um, very nice. Yeah, there's no complaints about that stone. Yeah, uh, so through the window, Danielle saying she was trying to put that behind, but that's still a fine result. Uh, so maybe not what she was looking for, but from my, from where I'm sitting, I'm looking down the sheet, I see two yellow stones covering up, you know, three quarters of the four foot circle. Uh, it's going to be a tough for uh, curling as the new black, uh, the red team. To, to get some rocks in there. And you know, that, that guard was plan B. Richard is getting a rock in play here. They are around the guards. 
He's looking for it to be in the top four, and he's got it. And making me look silly when I say <laughs> it's going to be tough to put a rock <laughs> in the forefoot uh, by just going ahead and just sliding it right in there as if it was just not an issue. Absolutely. Uh, the Matt one issue when the guards don't match the rocks in the house, uh, it's not a very long run back. So I could definitely see Matt playing a raised takeout uh, if he decides it's the right time for that. It looks like it's not yet. Um, and I think I agree that it's not yet because if you try that and you miss, you take out your guard. Um, so I think you want to keep the guard in play. It's still helping you a bit. Absolutely. Come around, try and freeze to it. Set it up for later. Put more rocks in play. This is Miriam here who threw. Sweepers are on it to make sure it gets into a good position. It's very close. The rock is dying kind of hard. Oh, They're going to wind up. It's going to end up on top of the second of the two guards. Blocking up the middle. It is on top of the one that the red draw went behind. So it does take a bit away a bit of the yep. raise takeout opportunity there. Uh, there's still the other guard that they can raise. And there's still plenty of draws around the way the ice is curling. Um, Richard calling for that same draw from the other side. So trying to make sure he outcounts from both sides. Going early for the score. And that rock is very, very narrow. It almost curled out of his hand. It did. It is diving back toward the center line already. It is on the guards. Uh, sweepers are off it. They don't want this to turn into a promotion for the Yellow Stones. They're gonna it just keeps on curling, ticks the highest of the three guards, and just makes a big pile. You know, Richard can't be that unhappy with that shot because although it didn't make it in the house, it changes all of the angles for any kind of run back. And I don't think anything is there. No, it covers up the a portion of both of the two guards that I was talking about for tapping into the house. And it took the other one and just sort of knocked it off to the side, but still overlapping with one of them. All those rocks are overlapping. There's really no good way to push any one of them in the house. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's a long end. There's lots of rocks left, but... Richard right now is in a good position to take one, which since he's got the lead, he doesn't mind that. Let's, he wants to maintain the lead. Mm -hmm. uh, Yellow spreads out the guards a bit with that shot. Uh, perhaps just trying to set up another play to be able to use them. Probably a good play if that is the case. Uh, and also just trying to prevent a big end. Uh, Richard's got one. It's going to be tough for them to get rid of it. Uh, they definitely don't want him to try to get two or three here. Um, Richard's in a good spot. If he takes one, uh, he's got a lead of three. Uh, but yellow isn't too upset. If they can force the red team to one, then they get the hammer back down three uh, with still a good number of ends to play. So I think both sides are willing to concede one red here at this end. Absolutely, because here's another guard. And Lock that the is, front. it's not even over the hog line actually. Oh, okay. I guess Richard called him off it to let it die. You know, given this ice, it looks like they're just trying to move some rocks around. Hit, hit the guards with the corner angle, muck things up, maybe wind up exposing shot rock. Matt's definitely thinking long term here. Not a lot of handle on that rock. No, it, it, it it's kind of cocked to one side and it's just gonna dive over. Yep. Uh, probably not what he was intending, but it is going to just make some action here. Spreads out all the guards. None of them are overlapping anymore. He definitely opened up the raise possibilities. Nat has one straight nose raise. He's got an angled raise from the outside. Mm -hmm. and, and, even a draw, and a draw port around the right side. Absolutely. Come right down the center line, it'll be fine. Uh, Richard actually looking at that draw port. I guess he's probably looking to just try to bury a second one here. The best defense is sitting one too. Uh, 
and then you know the second best defense is just a, a good defense and so if this ends up light he's just going to build a big wall but it's not light it might be i don't think it is though if i can't tell it must be close we'll go with that it's really close it's around the guard Oh! Is. Oh, it just ticks the guard. I thought it was there. So it does clog the port. It makes, forces any draws to go just a bit that much further off the center line. Matt's looking at the Rays. That's, that's really all he's got right now. No, oh, and what a sort of backbreaker of a shot this could be if he makes it. There are no other rocks in the house. So, you know, raising yellow onto the red, putting a yellow buried under all these yellow guards, uh, almost just takes red out of play for the end. Yep, and he's going to have lots of raise, raises available for Skip's Rocks. Yeah, Red is going to have to just scramble to not give up a big end. Well, he's going for the run back takeout. He needs it to curl just a little. Get a nice nose. I think it's a little wide, but it's close. Oh. Wound up a little wide. But, oh, didn't even really open up a port. That port is too narrow with as much curl as we're getting. Yeah, I, I can see the redstone. There's a line. If the if it was not curling as much as it is, there is a pretty wide line to just throw a good hard hit through there. I guess the line actually is still there, but trying to gauge the curl so that you hit that port exactly the way you need to. You'd have to throw super up weight and let it curl just a little bit. Anyways, I think curling is the new black is looking to raise their red guard oh he came out yet again on this out turn he came out wide and overcorrected narrow yeah he looked like he had maybe his weight on the stone uh, which is not uncommon uh, uh, for new curlers uh, I'm not sure if this guy is a new curler um, but it's also not uncommon for an experienced curler to just you know have a bit of a mishap <laughs> on the delivery well he does wind up guarding the easy rays over on the left-hand side. So Matt has no easy choices left. He can do the rays takeout or the rays promote, or he can try and throw really up weight and get through that port and take the red out directly, which I think is the call. I mean, it's there. The hole is wide enough. Matt will essentially be throwing straight down the ice, but just a little bit to the right to make sure there's room for the rock to curl back. Yeah, the broom is right on the center line. Um, I want to see him make the shot. Oh, pretty clean delivery. It looked a little wide, but it's still the rock is on the center curling. line. It's curling. It's curling. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's got nice. it. He is dead on it, and it rolls to the top of the button there. That is, that, that's the shot. You can't call that shot any better. He came out a little wide. They let it curl. He they This vice had them sweep it to hold the line, not for the hit, but for the roll. And now that sucker is buried. Richard has almost no line on it because you can't curl the other way through that hole. No, and if you try to throw the same line that was just there, you won't make any contact. Nope. I'm so you. He's got two stones. He may want to use one to maybe clear some guards to then have the shot with the hammer. Uh, it looks like he's going for the angled takeout. Use his guard on the right side of your screen and raise it back at about 30 degrees. I mean, it, it, it's there. If this were the Olympics, they'd do it, but they say hit the Olympics. No, not only is this not the Olympics, 
It's not even a particularly competitive bond <laughs> spiel. It's our club <laughs> internal bond spiel. And this year, it's essentially held the first weekend of the curling season. So it's not even mid-season where we've all had our league teams <laughs> together for a bit and had some practice in. The ice has been in for about a week and a half. Uh, the only thing that's been held here uh, was a Hot Shots camp last weekend. Mm -hmm. So any of people who were here for that uh, certainly have had some practice in. Oh, he's, uh, not, he's not gonna like this. A few people on and off been using the ice for some practice. They are offline. They might wind up promoting yellow into the house for two. They're going to let it curl. Oh. And that yellow is on the rings. So we go to the final two stones yeah. at the end. Uh, yellow's last rock here. Suddenly now seeing themselves sitting two without the hammer. You know, you I, I worry about that center port. I think that's what you need, is you just need a center guard here. Yep. Uh, just make it so that Richard doesn't really have any options with the hammer. I mean, you know, he'll all he'll really have is some way to try to get one or to get in to cut you down to concede one. Uh, because it would be easy to be second shot. There's a lot of enough house available. Absolutely. But you definitely don't want to leave that port down the center line. It's barely a rock wide. But if anyone can hit it that's <laughs> out there right now, it's Richard. Um, I mean, you throw rocket weight, you, mi you spin the rock so it doesn't curl at all, you, you, you pray. And if you just throw a shot that hard, you tick a guard, and then guards start moving around. And, and sometimes you end up in the house, or you end up making the rock uh, move any way that you were trying to move. Yep. So now this rock is, is a little wide, so he might be trying to promote another one in. They're going to wait and have it curl. They got to get off the red. They don't want to push the red in. There it goes. There it goes. They're going to tick the guard over. Oh, wow, it curled a ton. And that isn't actually going to do anything to that center port. It's, it doesn't close the port, but it might make them sit three. Yeah. Our cameras are at a little yeah. bit of an angle where we see a little bit of white under the rock, but, but it might sort of actually be white. Yeah. You know, that's... That's not a bad result. Richard ignoring the port in the middle. He's going to go for the raise. If he makes it perfectly, he can raise to the button. But even then, I, I think his real goal here is just to cut yellow down to one point. Let I them think take one. I think that's probably it. Is um, letting them take one. He'll still have a one point lead and still have the hammer. Mm. Um, Probably actually a better result overall than him taking one uh, and giving the yellow team back the hammer uh, a chance to set up another big end. Uh, he really just doesn't want to give up two or three here and lose the lead. Oh, I I think he's given up too. That rock looks rock looks a little light. I mean, it's coming down it's and it's just super light. It's got the line. It's going to make contact with that red right on the nose. Nope. But. Oh, I actually didn't even. It still we don't even hear any contact. I, yeah. So the so the question is. The question is, is it is two it or three? Two or three. Delivering it and over it. They're moving the other stones. We'll see if they pull out the biter bar. And they're moving that one as well. So uh, we will have to wait and see what the score is. So yellow is at worst tied. If no, they got they've already hung a three. It is five it was to four three. yellow. Great end. Great end for yellow. No, that's a that is a, a great end. They made the shots they had to make. Uh, that tight takeout through the port. That was beautiful. It's a spectacular shot. A, a clutch shot right when they <laughs> needed one. <laughs> yep. Um, and then capitalizing on some mistakes, setting up the end to make uh, the red team have to make some difficult shots, uh, and being able to capitalize when those shots didn't go as planned. That's curling. So for the second end in a row, the Hammer Hogs will not have the hammer. And they're perfectly fine with that. Oh, Danielle overcorrected and throws a nice light guard, which might wind up hog. It No, it's going to be over the hog okay. line, but it's gonna, and it's actually going to make a nice way back to the center line you here. You know what? I should be quiet and watch the rock more. Watch it's more. That, this it's is perfectly fine. Yeah, it's not exactly on the center, but it's in that four-foot zone. Uh, it's pretty high, but not the worst spot now that you've got the lead. It covers a lot of house now. Oh. 
and I hear behind me Chex Mix for everyone. So if you are watching at home and would like some Chex Mix, go get some. end the opening stone for the red team just sails through the house um, a little bit of a breakdown I think here in the red team's plans uh, not being able to get those lead stones in play uh, the lead stones you know usually not necessarily scoring uh, but they do dictate your whole strategy for the rest of the end afterward so very critical to at least get them in play so that you can try to play around them. And so that has been part of the undoing uh, of curling as the new black in the last two ends. Um, they they haven't gotten the lead rocks in play. Right, and but it's hard to say undoing when it is still a one-point game. Absolutely. So they can turn that around very quickly and start stealing multiple times like they did the first three ends. Um, one way or another, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a, a strong finish of this game. Absolutely. Um, we've definitely seen a strong start. Well, yellow with two rocks in play. Time for Diana to throw her last rock of this end as lead for curling as the new black. Richard calling for the draw into the house. They don't mind a guard right now, but might as well put it in. Free guard zone will not last much longer. Looks to be inside the called line with that one. Absolutely. Still looks, nope, I was going to say, still looks to have room around these guards, but as it takes a sharp dive, it's not going to get around the guard. It is over the hog line. It's just going to expand the center guard. Little right frozen to it. It is going to nestle between them just to make sure that yellow can't get three in a row to win via that strategy. Red gets the block. <laughs> Connect four. Put to you by Milton Bradley. We are just getting all the sponsors you can hear. <laughs> Chex Mix, <laughs> Milton Bradley. Marion, as she noted, she came out a little narrow. Sweepers, Sweepers are on it. Holding the line, but the, lo well. the rocks have been mostly curling late, so it's hard to tell if they're holding the line because and the rocks there it really starts to bend. curl early. But if they get this around this guard, they have done oh! so. Oh, just and then they just keep dragging <laughs> it back. It's going to be in the top eight. <laughs> that is a heck of a draw. Christopher almost collapsed after that sweep, but oh, that was such a fantastic sweep job. They everyone, held it. everyone on the sheet appreciating just how tight that was <laughs> around the guard. <laughs> you know, curling rocks have these little grooves in them, and I'm sure those rocks were interlocking and just breathing on each other as they went past. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've heard, uh, I used to bowl a lot, and I've heard it said sometimes that sometimes you make a spare by the dirt on the ball, <laughs> and that was... The pretty much there. The if they if they had polished that rock one more wipe, there would have been contact. Yeah. 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 Not bad, not bad. Richard looking to clear up the middle. Does a nice job. Winds up shoving some guards around. It doesn't quite expose shot rock completely. But he is content with that shot. Looking for the same kind of shot, just a draw right behind the previous draw. Absolutely. He wouldn't even mind a center line guard here. No, a guard is definitely, I think, the better miss. Uh, a draw behind but into the back uh, just gives uh, the red team a place to put a stone. Well, it's not heavy. He's definitely, they're definitely around the guard. Yeah, plenty of space around the guard compared Look to last the time. They can bring it right down to their existing rock. That Get is going to be a little touch and a l possibly enough separation to double them out now. Yeah. But I'm Richard is going to go ahead and peel a guard first. Richard looking for the long game. Going ahead, just peel the guard, open it up. Fair enough. I, d I definitely think the double is there. 
It's definitely there. Uh, if, you, if you miss it, suddenly you're way behind. Clearing the guard is not a bad way to set up for the double. Um, or it could end up being a raised double <laughs> off the note. It's just going to be a single. <laughs> but if they raise the guard to get into the house. Definitely not the plan. But Pretty good plan B. And now it sets up uh, just a nice bump take out there yeah. on the redstone. Because the redstone is not under the guard. So now yellow, I think, is going to be have to be a bit aggressive here and go after that redstone. But it's just the angle is tough. You're going to have to curl across the face so that you can knock it and not jam. Pretty good line, but like it will Skip curl. says, it needs to curl a lot. Here there it, it goes. There it goes. Over it's the center line, jam, but jam. not jams and then throws back a little bit, leaves the red somewhat covered by the shooter. But but that whole tandem of stones there, the yellow and the red, are now not under the center guard. So it, it Richard, uh, yellow and red each have a play to take out the opposing rock on those, of those two. Absolutely. But Richard smartly just calling for splitting the house, trying to sit one, two. This is pretty good weight for a draw, but it's outside, and it's going to end up taking the yellow instead. So red is still going to be shot. Yellow, I think, is going to be second shot. Yellow is definitely second shot. And all three are exposed. Yellow, if they really wanted to, could be you know, aggressive and maybe a bit reckless and just take out both reds. Well, the, the taking out both reds is, is a little conservative, where you're like, OK, I just want to make sure that we take out the red rocks. The more aggressive play would actually be a promote. You just prom nose promote your yellow rock onto the button. You're gonna leave yourself with a guard. But I, yeah. I, I think I like the take out here. I, 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 in general, I like just taking opposing stones out of play. You can't ever really go wrong with that. You'll never, especially when you have the lead. The, yellow, the best thing yellow can do is just make sure red never scores, and taking all the red rocks out will do that. Uh, I also kind of like a little hit and flip off of the red rock in the forefoot to flip that over too? under the other one on the center line. Oh, that is super narrow. He might take out his own rock They're here. They're going to, I think he might actually shoot this gap that we didn't think was a gap. Nope, there's and the final curl. No, he's going to, oh, and he <laughs> shoots that gap instead. Oh, the worst possible result. I didn't think. Off, oh. the, off the stone through the uprights. <laughs> And he does not get three points for that one, unfortunately. Oh, just the wrong <laughs> angle. <laughs> sometimes everything just goes right for you, and sometimes <laughs> everything just goes, goes wrong. wrong. Oh, yuck. Well, Richard now in a commanding position for this end. Now, he can't guard both of those rocks with one stone. No. He's he's there's going to be a shot. There's going to be a shot. Uh, so I think if there is a priority, it's either the shot stone that's in the forefoot or the pocket to cover up the double. Because if you cover up one stone but leave the port to take out both anyway, you haven't really covered either. That's fair. I, at this point, just get a guard somewhere near there. But yeah, he definitely is sitting two and needs to score both. And this rock is not going to wind up a good guard. No, it, if it draws and splits the house, it could be good there too. But I don't think they've got that either. It's sticking around. It is draw weight. No, it's going to wind up a nice first shot. That is a solid draw right to the T-line. <laughs> Definitely not what he called. And there's no triple. There's any Number. combination <laughs> of doubles here. Uh, so yellow, I think, is just going to have to pick two red stones and get rid of them. See, I don't think they're going for the double. I think Matt is playing for the freeze. A freeze you, is if good. If you come right yeah. down, you can basically freeze to the button. Yeah. I was thinking maybe use that middle stone to then flop over onto mm -hmm. the shot stone. But, but the only problem is your rock would then be exposed. Yeah. So then Richard can, again, hit and sit and sit two. Mm -hmm. 
I think this is the only way you're really going to give Richard one and maybe generate a steal if things work out perfectly. Yeah, giving up one here is not a bad result for the yellow team uh, because one red would tie the game, and then yellow will have the hammer as a chance to set up the eighth by maybe scoring a big end in the seventh. Mm -hmm. uh, that big three-ender in the fifth is uh, huge. Really going to dictate you know, how these teams want to try to play out the end of the game. Oh, they've got to watch this carefully. It is all over the center of the stone, center of the three stones. Watch it hook, watch it Here hook. Here comes the hook, but they're going to sweep it to maybe get some contact. No, no, no. Flashing. Flashing right through. Oh, two, two bedrocks in a row, and it just completely flips the end around. Richard. Yeah, that came down Ooh. to, I'm not sure if part of it was maybe just misreading the shot, or if it's one of those cases where the skip just didn't make up his mind in time of what he wanted that to do. Because um, I see a lot of things there. If they just sweep it really early, they can maybe hold that on the outside there. Absolutely. Uh, if they just pick it up a little bit later and just hold the inside line there, they make contact with the inside of the outside redstone there and can flop over and either remove one or bump over and get on the button. Absolutely. You needed either more or less sweeping, just yeah. not that amount of sweeping. Oh, you always hate to see those shots. I know, I know I hate to call those shots because it's like, all right, do I go to plan B? All right, yes, go to plan B. Wait, plan, plan B is not working. Can we go back to plan A? Oh, I kind of screwed plan A, so. Richard definitely looking to throw up a guard here. I mean, he, he doesn't mind a biter. Yep. Set four, really put yeah, the pressure good on. Good news, bad news here. Good news, obviously, red in command with the hammer and sitting all of the rocks right now. There's no yellows really anywhere threatening. Uh, the bad news, they're so spread out across the house that there's not much of a way that he's going to be able to cover them all. Um, he will be able to cover at least one, which will then leave him a shot to get at least two. So he does have control of the end. Absolutely. So it looks like he's going to go for biting top 12 just on the side of the center line protect up shot rock, because he can also use that really high guard that's going to be on the right side of your screen in a moment. Oh, it's, it's, it gets guard weight. Just trying to hold it wide. It's going to guard that line yep. right down the inside of second shot stone, so that's, yeah, that's a very pretty nice. good spot. It's off of the other guard, so there's a wide range there that you can't hit now. And it covers the line that would be the double. Yep. It covers the draw and it covers the double line because you can't hit and roll in off of the left four foot red rock. I mean, is unless, well, you might be able to throw super duper rock weight, hit the leftmost red and flop over, but that's really difficult. That I was going to say, I think that's what they're doing. But no, they're throwing the other handle here. So I think they're still going to try to take out this second shot stone. Mm -hmm. and stick around. And stick around, maybe bury under that guard that Richard just threw. I don't, I don't know if the bury under that guard is through, but what they could do is actually roll to the outside a little bit and try and tuck under that red rock on the left side of your screen. Oh, but okay. I, that, it doesn't really help you that much because then it's an easy run back takeout. But as long as this rock sticks around, they'll be okay. At this point, yellow, probably in a little bit of panic mode here, just needs to get rid of red rock so that this doesn't turn into a four or a five. Well, four or five is bad. But if you make your hit, then you know, you've limited them to three. And if you limit them to three, then they're only going to have a lead of two. Right. And, and you, if you can get two. And if you can limit them to too. If you can somehow get this in, take out a red, and stick somewhere near the button, uh, where then red will be limited to two, oh you've still got yourself narrow. in a good spot. It's narrow. He's on the guard all the way. Can he go? Can he get through a port? Is there a port there? Can it be a run back takeout? It is, just but not rocks. on the right stone. Oh, y Richard's just going to have to draw and touch paint. Going to get four. Well, should get four. Oof. Rough turn of events for Hammerhogs here. They had two or three really fantastic ends. 
And this one just falling apart, unfortunately. And Richard takes advantage of it. So we're gonna watch here as Richard just draws and touches paint. He's got plenty of backing. Looking at that rock, the line's just fine. They do need the touch paint. It's looking pretty light. It's at least on the rings at this point. Um, I certainly agree that they can't hurt it, so they may as well just all go right. and sweep it all the way. They're gonna put that onto the, just, oh, not quite onto the top of the forefoot. But that is gonna be four red stones in the house. Uh, a little bit of deliberation. I don't think, obviously not about who scores, but about whether or not they decide to shake. I, I can say that I don't think that I would here because four still makes it a three point game with the hammer. So if I'm yellow, I think I do at least want to try one more in. Mm -hmm. um, they're not, I don't think at a time constraint. It is 315. I think they had about until now to finish the end they're on and play one more. So I think even by time, they still have at least one more end to play. They, I, I think they get all full eight end games right now. Oh, I well think then they've hit the point where yeah. there's two more ends. You might as well. Well, as the Hammer Hogs, I think you at least have to play the seventh here. Absolutely. Um, you're down three, but you have the hammer. So if you can get a two or a three, you are in this game all the way to the end. Uh huh. Uh, and if it goes badly and you get stolen on, then you can shake. But you you got to at least try to use your hammer here and get a big end. Absolutely. Uh, they did it in the fourth, and then they even got a big steal in the fifth. So even if they only get to within one or two, uh, they've shown that they can steal points too to try to win it in the eighth. Hammer hogs are not out of this yet. Diana throwing a good line and good weight, but as she said, forgot to put the handle on it. Yeah, yep, it's just gonna and it picks the wrong one. It's just kind of drift over to the outside. It's over the hog line, but over the sideline as well. So Diana's first rock out of play. We'll see if Danielle can put up a cent or some kind of guard. Really at this point, you'd, you'd love the corner guard, but any kind of guard is good. Anything to be able to try to hide behind is good, yes. Mm -hmm. and well, one of the sweepers has given up. Now the other one does. And that it is, is not over the hog line. line. Unfortunate. So both teams are uh, failing to get the lead stone in play. Uh, so won't affect the end overall, as in about both teams essentially playing with seven stones this yep. end, and we're right back to the original team throwing first, throwing first again. This one they do get in play. Oh, that rock. And it reverses handle or something at the end, or it didn't actually look like it was still rotating the correct way, but kind of flipped the mm. other way on the roll. I don't know. <laughs> something funky going on it with that rock. It was turning right and sliding left. That's all I can really <laughs> say. Uh, Sometimes that happens. Sometimes they, it's just dirt on the rock, dirt on the ice. You know. It's actually an unfortunate move because now it puts up a nice corner guard that the Hammerhawks can use. It does. It was actually on a pretty good line to break back and be a good solid center guard. Yeah. Break. Easy. Look up. They're all the way around the guard. Lots of room. And over on sheet C, they appear to be playing the seventh end and shaking, but they don't appear to have hung any score from the sixth. So I really have no idea what the score was over there. Well, given the given yellow is currently sitting like three or four in that house over on sheet C, we're going to say that yellow won the game. Oh, yeah, yellow uh, being Team Hamilton. Uh, probably did, in fact, beat Team McNeil uh, by a, s a score that we cannot exactly give you details on. 
But that does mean that in whatever event they're playing in, Team Hamilton is going to advance around. I believe that was a B event game. Uh, so that means Team Hamilton will be playing tomorrow morning then uh, in the B event semifinals. Over here, back here on sheet B, unfortunately, Dana's takeout goes through the house, flashing right by the, the shot rock. Well, they play tomorrow morning or tonight? I want to say they're playing tomorrow. No, I think they got one more game tonight. They do have one more game tonight. I think they're actually playing at 5.30. 5.30 or at 8? I think, no, because the a, only, a, only A event plays at 8. Okay. B event plays at 5.30. I do remember Travis telling me that he did have a weird line that could take him through three games today. Yep. And I'm pretty sure they did play at 8.30 this morning. And then they played at 1.30 so they today. Played at 1.30. So they do have one more of the two draws left to play in today. Uh, unless that was they could have lost into a game tonight, maybe, but I don't think so. I think we're almost at louts for everybody. Yeah, uh, we had a pretty weird draw. We were setting up for 16 teams. Uh, we got 15, and then we had a few drops. We've got a bracket that's kind of wonky. It's got some <laughs> lopsided pieces. Uh, we ended up dropping a whole day from the spiel. We were setting up to go Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But when we only had you know, two draws worth of teams, uh, we were able to do it, the opening games all in one day. Uh, so it was very nice, you know, friendly, you know, intimate internal spiel. Uh, you know, all good players and friends here. Um, having a good time, just hanging out here Saturday, throwing some rocks around, yelling at each other. But of course. Richard calling for the draw or the freeze, and they're sweeping it, so it must be close. He, he wants it to tuck in a little bit more. Rock winds up a little bit short of shot, but not a bad not a bad position to set up. No, it's a effectively a center guard, mm -hmm. but well into the house. It it's covers the center line. It covers the button. Yellow's not going to. Oh, I don't want to say yellow's not going to be able to get around it. They will have a good way to draw around it the way the ice is moving, uh, but it's going to have to be pretty precise. Um, and red will have a good option to just tap that forward at some point. So um, yellow shot. Red, still not in bad position, though. Uh, some sweepers trading brooms, I think, getting ready to deliver the next stone. Yellowstone is going to touch the red one and move it. Not enough. Yellow is still going to be shot. Red is still going to be second. That does bury the yellow rock completely. And but, but Richard should be able to make a hit on the red that'll take out the yellow. The nice part about this last rock is that it stuck around in the house. Yellow yeah. does now have two rocks in the house and they're very separated. So if the end goes the right way, that could really help them out in getting a big end. It could. If Richard uh, and you know Curling is the new black here, uh, Daniel shot here, if he doesn't uh, draw this to a perfect spot, uh, it's gonna leave uh, an open takeout one way or another. Uh, with a split house for yellow, and they could have a chance to get their two or three that they need to stay in this game for another end. This is looking really nice for just a little tap raise. Oh, but it's a little short. Over the top, but it's going to be a very nice guard. Um, Fascinating. It's guarding a stone that isn't shot, but by guarding second shot, you're locking it in there and cutting yellow down to one, unless they can draw around that for two. It really narrows the scoring zone. It does. So Matt, look, his broom is all the way out on the edge of the 12 foot, six feet away from his target, if not more. And this looks to be well inside of that broom. I don't know that that's necessarily bad because I don't think it's curling as much as they thought. It's unfortunately a little bit heavy. That's probably why it's not curling. Yet. Yeah. Because um, it's, it's curling heavy, as you can see, that this one's going to sail through. Richard needs to give it some help, but it does cross the back line. Not completely, though, nope. I don't think. Still in play. Still in the back of the 12-foot. Still got, Oh, yeah. So yellow not out of this by piling rocks around the perimeter. If they can make that clutch shot like they did in the fourth or fifth, uh, mm. could have a chance at something like a three or a four here. It, it'll be a tough shot. I mean, yellow's got some work to do to try and make a big end. And of course, red's just going to keep putting rocks in play. 
You know, I mean, if they can, if red can beat yellow to the forefoot, they're going to really make it difficult for Hammer Hogs. Now this rock looks like it's going to overcurl if it's for a draw. Probably going to tick one of those top two. Winds up a guard, a high three. But won't really come into play. The one thing it does do is it prevents, it helps take away the run back takeout on those two reds on the center line. So kind of junking up the front to protect their second shot. Now we're really at a race to draw. Whoever can put more rocks on the button first is going to score more points. This one again looking a little heavy. The line's just fine, but it's going to come back and it's going to come back into the forefoot and then back out through the forefoot. Oh, it's going to tick in the back. Oh, it's going to split, and they're both going <laughs> to stay in the it back. It stays. I mean, yellow's got four rocks in the house now. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> their third, fourth, <laughs> and fifth shot. So, five, you know, four rocks in the house still only going to get one point out of this the way they're sitting now. It does set up that if in the event they can ever get that red one out of there, they're going to get a lot of points. I, I, just, I just don't see that happening. I, it's not likely. Yeah. It's not likely. I'd love to see the shot. I, I, I want to go out there and throw it right now to see if I can make it, but you can't. just not likely. I thought of like, could I make it? Yes. Is it like a 1% shot? Absolutely. I probably won't make it, but it's totally possible. Richard Chin throwing his first of two skips rocks, looking to draw onto the button, or at least top four foot and be buried. He's wide enough. All right, the rock starts to break. It's not breaking a ton, though. I think he's heavy. He's going to come down to the pile here in the back of the house. And he's right. over the T-line. And he's going to uh, freeze out those two yellow stones in the back now. I don't think that was what he wanted. But well, it, it doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't. You know, as much as we were saying that those rugs don't matter, they're <laughs> they're in play. They give you backing, and now red is second and fourth shot. Mm -hmm. So yellow really is running out of options to get multiple points here. Well, they are shot. They can draw for two, but they're looking for a three or a four here. Mm -hmm. And even if they get a two, they're looking at having to steal one in the eighth to go to an a tiebreaker. Well, but even it, it at this point, it really doesn't matter. Down one or or tied, you have to steal. Oh yeah. So that's true. Even tied, you're giving up the hammer, and so you're still playing for a steal. No, it's a, st it's a steal to tie versus a steal to win. Right. But or I guess you know, yeah, you can't force a blank on the stealing side because the hammer could just throw one in. Exactly. So yeah, they would have to steal. Matt coming out with his first two skips rocks. He looks really wide. The weight's closer, and because it's wide, it should slow down. I mean, they, they just need to be full forefoot to count. It, it looks a little heavy, folks. Oh, it's slow. Oh, sweep oh it's going to yes. be light. Oh, it's no. going to be light. Oh, no. Oh, no. The rock went so far wide. Once it finally curled, it died on them, and they wind up leaving that rock just biting the eight foot instead of fully in the eight foot, which is what they needed. The w only advantage here is they kind of block the same draw for Richard. So, so he can't out count shot rock without some kind of craziness going on. So in the third end, I think it was the third, we had four rocks all touching the four foot circle. Uh -huh. Here in the seventh end, we have, I believe it's seven rocks in the house, none of them touching the four foot circle. So some games, every you know, the race to the forefoot is frantic and exciting, and in some games it is sort of slow and <laughs> plodding, and we're just waiting for it to happen. Yep. I've been in both those kinds of games, and they're both really nerve-wracking because like, oh, man, there's so many rocks here. I don't know what to do. And like, there's no rocks in here. Why can't we put a rock here? Richard looking at the angles. He might be thinking about some kind of hit and roll double. 
where he hits that new yellow rock uh, just on the left-hand side. It rolls over, punches the red rock on the center line of the house that runs back into shot rock yellow and pushes it probably not out of the house, but out of shot position. This is where we really want that telestrator here. I was going to say, I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> uh, if you had a little marker and could draw that for me, I would well, appreciate it. I have it. a marker, but I'm not going to use it because it's an actual marker. Okay. <laughs> Richard looks, ooh. What, what is this call? It might be just a straight center line raise takeout, trying to promote his second shot at an angle into shot rock. Could be just promoting it to be shot, too. It could also be just throwing up a guard. That's a guard throw. He's trying to block Oh, it's up falling the off the line immediately. Yep. I. Oh, he, he's, he's yelling to get it over, so that is uh, roughly at least what he was looking for. Something to just plug up the front. Um, I can't imagine that that was the line he had in mind because it looked like as soon as he let it go, it just kind of fell to the side. And it's going to be a hog stone. The vice is looking at it, and he doesn't like it, but he no. realize he's going to go ahead and admit that that is not over the line. All right, so if there were some magical shot for yellow to move that red rock out of second position and out of the house. They m they could get four, but I don't think it's there. They're going to have to settle for They're raising settle for two, I think. Raising that right yellow rock. Just got to raise it about a rock's width to take two. Take two, go into the last end, down one, try and steal. Absolutely possible. Once again, with as much as this ice is moving, Broom is all the way out on the edge of the 12 foot. About six feet away from his draw target. It's close. I want to say it's a little light. But they have to let it curl. Here comes the curl. They jump on it after the break to try and lengthen the distance. It's really close. They don't have to move it far. Oh. It's it's just not going to get there, and that's going to be one yellow. Ah, uh, yuck. That's not what hammer hogs are hoping for. Po possibly the worst result they could have had there. Um, well, uh, no. They I mean, could I have guess promoted the worst red well, into position. No, I mean, not for that particular shot, but for the end, yes. scoring one, they're Here's down two. I mean, they did steal three earlier, so they're, I mean, they can reproduce this and still steal. But I think they would have almost rather had given up one than scoring one just to keep the hammer, because you're just that much more likely to get a three or a four with the hammer than without it. At this um, point, the, the, the one is almost, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's a bad result. You got to play through it. I mean, it was a pretty, I mean, it was an okay result. I mean, it's more points. You're down behind. You got some points. Yep. Um, I think, though, given the final end and given that yellow absolutely needs to, I think red is just going to go in shutdown mode here. Just keep all the rocks out of play, clear the sheet, and it's just going to make it so that yellow doesn't yep. have to at the end. They're playing for the blank, essentially. If yellow puts the rocks in, pl rock in play, take it out. That's going to be it. So yellow's really going to have to try to use the free guard zone rule here. Uh, put Absolutely. up some rocks that red is not allowed to feel yet. And then try to just have more in play than red can take out. Um, hopefully get one undercover. Uh, two undercover because they need to steal two. Oh, this one's dying quickly here. <laughs> it's, it's over the hog. I think they're going to be able to maybe get this to the doubles mark there. Uh, it is going to be back to the center line. That's a good result. Yeah, that's a good solid guard. Uh, not as deep as they wanted, but it's a guard. It's in play. It's close it's to the center line. It's close to the center line. Uh, 
uh, curling is the new black, uh, is not allowed to remove that stone yet. So They can move it around. They, they can move it around, it. but I think that's the call. Uh, there's not really any risk here if you yeah. accidentally violate the guard zone and have to put it back. So I think they're going to just go for the tick. Uh, and if they flash, then they threw it through, and that's probably a good strategy. Yep. And if they violate, then they just put it back, and it's like they flashed it. So. And they're going to violate the free guard zone. Okay. Richard's just going to stop that rock before it even hits. Yep. We all know what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, technically, you let that happen, make sure it's going to go out, but that rock had a lot of steam. Yeah. That yellow was going to leave place somewhere, if not out the back of the <laughs> house, then over the sideline. Um, save a little time, save a little wear on the rocks. Mm. The next draw on this field is not for a couple of hours. Um, they're planning on uh, doing a little bit of ice resurfacing. Uh, so they do have some extra time here if they need it. Uh, we've got some padding in the schedule. Well, that rock looks like it's over the hog line. They're going to hope to get some separation on these rocks. They wind up there splitting they them. They split into two pretty nice corner guards. That's, uh, that's, that's really not, not exactly what they wanted because they want to guard up that middle. They have to guard up the middle. Uh, if they had the hammer, I would say those are perfect guards to then each draw behind and split the house. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, uh, the team that's throwing now is the team with the hammer. And, yep, and he go ahead and he's yep. going to go ahead and use one of those corner guards. You might as well. I mean, the, the play here is either draw in or take out and make sure you roll out. Oh, yeah. that is super light. Yeah, I would say with this being the fourth stone, the free guard zone rule is still in play. Uh, and oh, that's right. They can't take it out yet. Curling is the new black. Definitely does not want another guard. They're going to let it hog. Yep. Now, if, if you're hammer hogs, do you throw up the center guard or do you go into the house? I, I, I would love to start trying to put rocks in the house. Yeah. Um, but you still leave the middle wide open if you do. So I think maybe you do draw one in, see what happens, and then start building from there. Because once you get And if you're a little light, then maybe you do end up with a center guard, and mm -hmm. you can go from there, too. So I think you just need to... You play the draw. Your plan B is a guard. Absolutely. And you, you just need to try to build your end um, it's in such a way that you're shot for at least two. Oh, um, that's light. When Richard goes to throw the last stone. Oh, Miriam is not going to like this one. It is super light. It's it's not going to be in the house, but it is in play. Probably, again, down to about that doubles mark. Okay, bonus points to the sweepers here. I thought that rock was almost That is actually going to touch the rings and be at least partially under that guard, maybe about halfway under that guard. Well, from, from the hack, that, that'll be fully exposed. It is, you can't throw the outside turn at it. You can't throw the inside turn, as Richard is calling for. Yeah. With not a lot of ice. So a little lighter of a shot than they were looking for, but not a big, not a huge miss. It, and it comes down to just in a different end or in a different predicament, that's probably a great shot. When all uh, the red team needs here is just a corner of that to just remove it from the sheet, that's all they have and that's all they need. Oh, but they tick the guard instead. Mm -hmm. um, Matt just makes sure that leaves in the back. <laughs> Now, if I'm Matt, I actually draw behind the other corner guard, and get, m and then you're already sitting too. Yeah, I think they need to. It, they need to guard the one that is in the house now, but they also need to get more in the house. Yeah. And I think the priority is just trying to get to two, um, make the red team keep making those hits, uh, and if they miss one, that's your opportunity to then start piling up some guards. Absolutely. Marion came out a little wide. Pretty wide. Yeah, a little stumble on the delivery. But this rock is still coming down. It's slowing really quickly. We've seen a couple on this line do that. As long as they get it in play, they're okay. But it's going so slow. Yeah, it's going to get but it's over, over the hog. And it's going to guard. It's going to end up with a guard. And that's and okay. And it's going to guard that rock in the house. So that's not a bad result for them. They're, they got one. They've got it 
pretty reasonably covered. Mm -hmm. The okay. outer half of it, I think, is exposed, but they're throwing from the hack on the inner side. Yeah. So it's a tough shot. I think Richard just wants to clear a guard. Absolutely. Richard, Richard is thinking, leave me something for my last shot. Yep. Just put ha ideally nothing else in play. One fewer ro yellow rock is one less rock that can score and block me. All right. They're going to hit something here. Yep. He's got to hit weight. Should hit and roll to the outside. Gonna hit, roll over. Very nice. Follow that stone out, and it is out. So we're now back where we started two rocks ago. Well, not where we started, but back where we were two rocks ago. Hammerhogs again have a choice to throw up a guard or draw behind the other corner. Last time, I think they called for the draw, but wound up with the guard. This time, they're going to call for the draw again. Yeah, sorry about that. Just for whatever reason, the right side of my headset is very uncomfortable. The left side is not, though, so <laughs> I'm <laughs> not sure what I'm doing wrong here. I have Rock asymmetrical looks ears. Rock looks pretty narrow. They like the weight. They want it to slow down and die. If it winds up dying and curling, that's great. But Oh, and here it does. It takes a big dive. Ooh. It's going to end up under that guard. I think they may want to put it, a little sweep it. on it. Sweep oh, they don't actually sweep don't even sweep it for line. You're right. And wow. it's going to go under the guard and onto the T-line. <laughs> this is why we, we, we're commentators right now. We're not on the ice. We're not walking with these stones. We're sitting here at an angle in the warm room, drinking our drinks, enjoying the game. Sweepers knew what that rock needed to do, and they did a great job on it. Bravo. And so yellow in the spot now where they want to be. Not exactly where they want to be, but they are sitting two, which is where they need to be. Uh, one is exposed, so uh, Richard is going to call for uh, Brian to take this out. You know, right? it's Daniel, Daniel, and I don't think he's calling for the takeout. I think he's calling for the freeze. Because if he were doing a takeout, he'd have the broom up by the rock. And his broom's on the T-line. Well, actually, most skips just use the T-line as their mark regardless. Not for takeouts. Um, actually, a lot of them probably Oh, this do. is, this is this super is, inside. Oh, it just, it just kind of fell over and it came out of his hand again. I've seen that a couple of times with different throwers today. Mm -hmm. um, he, he might wind up taking this guard over and exposing shot rock if it's got the weight. And it does. Yeah, that's a, a, an okay result. Uh, the guard is now not covering really anything, and both shot rocks are exposed. I mean, this is okay. So now, do you throw in for a third, or do you try to cover something? There's no bad options here. I mean, you can throw the draw, try and draw behind that new center guard. You could raise that new center guard, or you can throw the guard on your current shot rock. Um, I would either do the straight draw, or if you wind up with the, with the guard of your, of your shot rock, that's okay too. Either one leaves the center guard in place. Oh, this looks kind of heavy. They're gonna tick the guard. They might be able to. Oh, it revert. It, it almost reversed it handle. Shot. Okay. And they split They're gonna on split. for four. This is getting interesting. I mean, unfortunately, nothing's under pr nothing has protection right nothing now. Nothing is under cover, and none of it is particularly close to the button. But Richard cannot. He can't keep move them takeouts. all. He can't move them all, uh, but he does have the hammer. And he so, from the, if the rocks sit the way they are now, all he has to do is just outcount them all, and none of these four score. Absolutely, but he but he has to outcount them. He has to have a rock in play on the button. Well, he the has the he has the hammer. But at this point, he can't play a takeout game. No, but he can just keep, if the if the sheet stays the way it is, he can just throw the hammer into the forefoot. Well, now, that's it, that's it easier said yeah. than done. Because hammer hogs are just going to guard the heck out of this. He's, he's not giving himself a ton of ice on this takeout. I'm a little surprised. It's almost like he's got draw line in mind. But it's not even, I don't know if it's even enough for a draw because the way we've been seeing a curl, and he was in well inside the broom. He's, he's going to raise one of those yellow rocks. This is not very not good. He's going to leave his rock as a guard. This is very bad. 
Hammer Hogs want a guard. They want a guard and they want one really anywhere. I mean, on the left side to cover the two uh, off the center line would be fine. Something where he's pointing there to cover the draw port is fine. Something right of the center line is pretty good. There's They're no really bad just guard. Any, uh, there's just too many places they need one. Anywhere they end up with one is going to be somewhere they need one. Yep. So uh, with this line, it looks like they want to play the center guard. If they wind up coming a little bit into the house and take their own shot rock under cover, that's fine too. But they, as long as this rock is in play and on the left side of the center line, they'll be happy with it. I mean, they've got to be feeling really good. We, we still they're have Tin. Tin still got rocks to throw. Oh so yeah, they're they got work to do. They can't win the game, but they can set up to win the game. Yes. They don't have the last shot, so they don't really get to dictate how the game ends. But they can set it up to make it as likely as they can, and that's what they've got going here. They've got four in the house. They've got a good scattering there. You know, the red team can't remove them all. And if they start to put up some guards, they're going to make it challenging. The red team is going to have to make some shots to close the game. All right, line looks fine. It's a little outside, but they're going to use this rock. We're watching it come down. It looks looks great. They're going to get a little tap, almost a freeze, onto their existing rock. Winds up with a great center guard. And you know what's fantastic about that is it hooked just a little bit inside of the red guard. So Richard can no longer do a straight promote of his red guard at Shot Rock. He's got to try something a little crazier. I mean, he's got plenty of hit and rolls off the left side of your screen. But. Yep, that's what he's pushing. That's what he's pointing out now. Mm -hmm. A hit and roll off of that rock on the T line uh, to then flop under and be in the forefoot there. Uh, B shot, one any one rock shot uh, mm -hmm. seals the game. The, I mean, this isn't the end yet. They're not out of stones yet, but there's just so many rocks in play. Now I'm guessing that he's throwing the out turn here, so the rock's going to curl to the outside on our left side, and he's going to get a fairly deep roll. I wouldn't be surprised if he hits the yellow rock in the 12 foot and goes for that deep roll under cover. He's got the out turn. He's looking for the hit. It he is actually going for the, he's gonna wind up with the nose. Doesn't get the roll he wanted. No, but at the moment he's gonna be shot. He's shot rock, so now hammer hogs have to deal with it. They have to go after it, and it means they can't throw up a guard. No, they do have to remove that stone, or in some other way make it not be shot. Uh, removing it's probably the best thing because if they just out count it, then they're still only sitting one. Mm -hmm. um, and it. Uh, I think the best thing they want to do is try to roll back to the center line off of this hit and get in the pile to make uh, to make Richard's last shot have to be a draw to the pin I, um, I or a hit and roll off of that other stone off from the left. I honestly don't think it's going to – the only thing you don't want is you don't want your rock to stay exposed. Right. Because then Richard's got an easy hit and sit. Yeah. You want this rock to either – wind up behind cover mm -hmm. or, or just, just roll feel. Out. Yeah, that's just true. Roll actually, rolling just clearing out. is actually a pretty good result. It's f Rolling out is fine. Richard's going to have a draw. What you don't want it to have is the hit and sit. Oh, the sweep it all the way, guys. Sweep it all the way. It's really light. He's on come the on, broom. come on. Come on, sweep it. It's got a curl, though. It's got a curl. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's going to just flash by oh about no. an inch. Oh, no. I can't believe it didn't curl that much. That wasn't that heavy. That was about hack to board weight. That yeah. was. It looked like he had it all the way. And it just oh. 
heartbreaker for Hammerhawks. They played an excellent last end. You know, bravo to Curling is the New Black for hanging in there. Yeah, handshakes. Not losing their cool. Handshakes all around. That really was a great game. Um, we are going to see uh, the team throwing the redstones. Curling is the New Black, skipped by Richard Chin. They're going to advance around. And we're going to see the Hammerhogs. I believe that will then uh, eliminate them from uh, this year's big spiel. Um, but again, kudos to them. They really hung in there. They mm -hmm. definitely were punching above their weight as far as uh, teams out there. And especially because I think these are all like first and second year curlers on this yep, team. So absolutely. that's, that's a, a really great showing. Uh, they ha had a good time, made a lot of good shots. And we'll see them around the club a lot more. Oh, absolutely. I'm looking forward to playing with Danielle and Matt in Pizza League. And I'm sure Miriam and Christopher are going to stick around. And this is, I think we're going to see this team again. Well, uh, we are going to sign off here. Our next game might be at 5.30 if we find anybody to webcast for us. Might not. But the next game will be here at the Potomac Curling Club at 5.30. So if you want to come on out here to Laurel, Maryland and watch in person, you are more than welcome to. We'd love to have an audience. So I want to give a quick thank you to all the volunteers who make this event possible. Liz and Laura and Liz again and Charlie. They do a fantastic job, and we really appreciate all the volunteer hours that go into this. I want to thank my co-broadcasters here, Michael Sell here with our color and line commentary and our board operators and occasional guest commentators, Stacy and Haley, giving us a little bit of entertainment value over here by <laughs> making faces at us while we're educating you and helping you process our curling match. And we look forward to doing it again. So once again, from the Potomac Curling Club, I'm Michael Dobbs. I'm Mike Sell. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you very much.